This is a, a traditional terminal services uh, before uh, BPI came into picture. Um, basically, in the older uh, uh, Windows 2003, uh, we had terminal services, and then the client would connect with terminal services to some kind of a VPN, which that is also becoming obsolete, uh, and uh, would request a, a, a session and the terminal services would have all the program installed and it would return the uh, program and the desktop to the um, client. Um, uh, as far as uh, what the Microsoft VBI infrastructure is um, uh, and the, what the architecture is, Microsoft uh, VBI is not a application. Uh, VBI is a centralized desktop delivery architecture. So when we talk about the VBI, we're really talking about the delivery platform for users that uh, they have a centralized storage, the execution and the management of the Windows desktop and it does that is being accessed in a centralized fashion. So uh, typically um, uh, all, all that uh, the VBI infrastructure resides in the data centers and the clients, uh, they're either being your remote or corporate users or offshore, they're accessing it. Um, through the web or through uh, uh, some other structure. Uh, ba ba basically, the, uh, this shows the architecture of uh, what we have put together in the lab. Um, and then the, the we have a remote desktop gateway that is a first point of entry. The connection between the client and the remote desktop gateway is HTTPS. And then from the remote desktop gateway all through the rest of the infrastructure is all PKI. Um, and then we have other components such as remote uh, web access, remote desktop web access. Uh, we obviously have a domain controller within the Active Directory. And then decentralized uh, uh, to all this is uh, where most of the intelligence resides is the connection broker. Connection broker is, is a new addition to the internal services infrastructure and, and it basically allows uh, compose, composing uh, the delivery. In other words, uh, we could have multiple application installed on multiple servers and then it'd be a connection broker. We, gonna, uh, we could specify what application goes to what user. Uh, session host is another component of the VBI infrastructure. Um, and there, that's where the application uh, gets installed. Um, well, with an exception of if when the, the VBI, we have a VM deliveries, which is a VM pool, a personalized VM, um, the first session host becomes a redirector and then the additional session hosts can be installed into a farm uh, to install additional application. For VM uh, delivery, we would need a uh, Hyper-V uh, server um, which, which and with a virtual host server role. Um, and then, uh, and then the, in the rest of the uh, uh, slides, we see an AppV and MedV, and we have the AppV and MedV to inject applications, the legacy-based applications into our desktop. Um, now, as far as the uh, uh, PKI infrastructure and, and then how these servers are securely communicating with each other, um, it's uh, the basically the certificates can be purchased either from um, you know external certificate authorities such as VeriSign, or uh, we could install a uh, certificate uh, server uh, within the environment and then create multiple. Um, public keys and, and then uh, uh, or alternatively uh, we, we could download a tool uh, there's a set of three uh, programs it's, it's one of them is make cert exe and cert 22 espsc.exe um, that which they're included as part of the microsoft windows sdk for windows 7 and dotnet framework 4 and then finally pvk import.exe and then these, these three utilities allow you to uh, create a, your own uh, self-generated certificates and uh, with your own private key for every server and, and then and 
obviously once you have a pfx file and it's registered on each server then uh, that certificate can be exported from one server and be placed in the certificate store of the other server in the trusted rules uh, so that facilitates the communication and allows the communications between the servers and so basically these are the three options so if you're doing it in a lab as perhaps would be the best that if you download those utilities and in the production environment obviously you won't want to either uh, purchase the certificates uh, certificates or put some kind of a, a certificate infrastructure um, uh, the, the these are the different scenarios uh, from this point on I'm gonna go through the, the how the application gets delivered um, the I mean the application can be published on a session host and so uh, and then the client uh, can request a uh, 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 an application and let's just see what happens basically the client goes to the remote desktop gateway as a first entry point gets authenticated and goes to connection broker connection broker knows where to send it where the application is uh, published and then uh, all that uh, application and this application session gets returned to the user now the next scenario is basically when your access user wants to access a pool of VMs, a virtual machine that resides in a pool on a Hyper-V. So when we have a pool of VMs that any of those uh, sessions, it could be a Windows 7, it can be delivered. There's no difference which one gets assigned to what user. And that would be a typical use of it would be for a call center where everybody have the same desktop image that uses the same application. So quickly, let's take a look. The client access and make a request to the uh, goes to the gateway comes to the domain controller goes to connection broker and then goes to the remote session host which redirects the request to the uh, virtual host server then go to vm pool and and then a vm pool session gets returned at desktop of windows 7. Um, now uh, i mean these are all active directory controls and a policy controls that which user gets assigned uh, a uh, desktop from a VM pool or from personalized VM. Next scenario will show how the personalized VM request works. Uh, the uh, client makes a request um, uh, to uh, for a virtual machine. It goes to the gateway, comes to domain controller, goes to connection broker, goes to session host, which redirects, redirects the request to serve virtual server host, and then uh, then at that point personalized VM because uh, you know that this whole architecture they know the request came from what user and they know what particular uh, virtual machine is assigned to that user and that virtual machine gets returned this would be a uh, scenario when a user have their own application installed on their uh, virtualized uh, environment and then they always have to have access to that particular VM and then VM cannot be shared because of the data centers and other reasons or uh, application uh, like a CAD or anything that the user used. And then, uh, then we may have a scenario that there are no remote desktop gateways involved rather than the first point of entry is the remote desktop web access, which is nothing but a web page. The user makes a request. The web page returns a login screen. The user enters his login information, gets authenticated. Then the web access knows what applications the user is authorized and returns a web page uh, that user can click on any of those icons and, and uh, ac gain access to those applications or uh, desktops. Uh, finally, this is a uh, app V and Med V uh, that is being added to the uh, infrastructure. The uh, client makes a request, goes to the gateway, comes to the main control, gets authenticated, goes to connection broker, and then the session host redirects the sessions to the virtual host server. Now we go to the pool of VMs. The pool of VM gets initiated that there's a desktop. Now the application on the desktop knows that it needs another application such as IE6 or anything uh, of uh, external application. They get merged and then they get delivered to the user. Uh, so that's pretty much the different scenarios that uh, we wanted to cover. And the next thing to do is to go over the hands-on lab so you get to see all these technologies and action and how they work together.